Jacques Francois Fio de l'Espérance, Board 1555, Insomte, Charete Maritime, Poitou Charete, France. He was one of four siblings. He married Angelique Robert, born around 1555, although records aren't exactly clear as to Jacques' spouse. As mentioned, the sources get more limited the further back in time we go, where some ancestors don't have many details beyond dates or places. Our older ancestries are more of a mystery. More information may become available as new discoveries have yet to be unearthed. Jacques' ancestry seemingly connects with the famous descendant of historical note, Hilary Rodham Clinton. It's 1570. Jacques' first child, Anne-Marie, is born. He is only 15, if records are correct. It's 1572. Jacques is 17 when the Saint Bartholomew's Day Massacre takes place. On this day, a targeted group of assassinations and a wave of Catholic mob violence was directed against the Huguenots, also known as French Calvinist Protestants, during the French Wars of Religion. The massacre began on the night of August 23rd, the eve of the Feast of Bartholomew the Apostle, and two days after the attempted assassination of Admiral Gaspar de Collinier, the military and political leader of the Huguenots. King Charles IX ordered the killing of a group of Huguenot leaders, including Collinier, and the slaughter spread throughout Paris. Lasting several weeks, the massacre expanded outward to other urban centers and the countryside. The St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre is traditionally believed to have been instigated by Queen Catherine de Medici, the mother of King Charles IX. The massacre took place a few days after the wedding of the king's sister Margaret to the Protestant Henry of Dever, the future Henry IV of France. Many of the most wealthy and prominent Huguenots had gathered in largely Catholic Paris to attend this wedding. That's when, late at night, a group drank Admiral Colonier from his bed, killed him, and threw his body out a window. The common people began to hunt Protestants throughout the city, including women and children. Chains were used to block streets so that Protestants could not escape from their houses. The bodies of the dead were collected in carts and thrown into the Seine River. The massacre in Paris lasted three days, despite the king's attempt to stop it. In the following weeks, there were mass conversions to Catholicism. It has been claimed that the Huguenot community represented as much as 10% of the French population on the eve of the St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre, declining to 7 or 8% by the end of the 16th century, and further, after heavy persecution began once again during the reign of Louis XIV, culminating with the revocation of the Edict of Nantes. Estimates of the numbers that perished in the massacre was varied from 2,000 by a Roman Catholic apologist to 70,000 by the contemporary Huguenot, Duc de Sully, who himself barely escaped death that night. It's 1598, the Edict of Nantes, signed in April by King Henry IV of France, granted the Huguenots substantial rights in the nation which was still considered essentially Catholic at the time. In the edict, Henry aimed primarily to promote civil unity. The edict separated civil from religious unity, treated some Protestants for the first time as more than mere schismatics and heretics, and opened a path for secularism and tolerance. In offering general freedom of conscience to individuals, 
the edict offered many specific concessions to the Protestants, such as amnesty and the reinstatement of their civil rights, including the right to work in any field or for the state and to bring grievances directly to the king. It marked the end of the religious wars that had afflicted France during the second half of the 16th century. It's 1635. The Franco-Spanish War is underway and will last for nearly another 25 years. The war was fought between France and its allies against their Habsburg rivals in Spain and the Holy Roman Empire. It consisted of two segments, the first as a connected conflict of the Thirty Years' War ended by the 1648 Treaty of Westphalia, and the second continuing until the 1659 Treaty of the Pyrenees. The war is generally viewed by historians as inconclusive. The Thirty Years' War was a conflict primarily fought in Central Europe from 1618 to 1648. Estimates of total military and civilian deaths range from 4.5 to 8 million, mostly from disease or starvation. During these conflicts, France sided with Sweden up against the Spanish and Austrian enemy. The war originated in differences between German Protestants and Catholics. Once again, as was seen throughout Jacques' lifetime, religion was the unfortunate cause of many a conflict. It's 1649, a year after the Thirty Years' War ended. Perhaps at ease with all the conflict he has seen in his homelands, Jacques Francois rests in peace in Rennes, Britain, France, at age 94.